Yo, 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 what is good? Let me get the shades on for this fantastic Thursday evening. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Command This. This is episode 263 for your your boys. Uh, I'm Steve, joined by uh, my homeboys and my, my co-hosts. Uh, we got Mr. Phil Credible down below. 5v5 hockey fights are better than the NBA. <laughs> And we're also joined by Dev. Says Daniels or a bus, so he's on the JD train. Phil, why, why are we talking hockey five v five or better than NBA? I know the answer, but let's let's educate everyone who's watching. So, <laughs> so to start the Rangers Devil game the other night. Oh my God, it was so good. They just said, "To hell with having a hockey match." It was so good. We're all gonna fight. So they had they line up one on one. Five on one side, five on the other. You pick the man in your position, and you throw hands. And you just go. Go for it. Oh, it was you so know, good. Right, know, off, right off the whistle. Fines. The, the, no, oh, my God. The, the, ref, the referee, I don't know what you call a, a guy, guy in hockey, right? He was trying to drop the puck, but he's like, are you guys going to put your sticks on the ground? Are you going to Are you gonna go? And then the Rangers, okay, puts the stick on the ground. They call it, and then bam. Gloves off. Let him go. Goon season. I'm telling you, that's, that's, you should just get out your system. But straight, straight Stifler mode, right? Yeah. What I don't know is why. Was there a beef behind that, or that just the they were Rangers like, and the Devils? I, let's give them some. Let's give them something to talk about. Jersey, money rate style. Yeah, it, it's just you know, it's a fight across the Huts. Oh, the fight man. across the East River. But Jersey automatically loses just because they're Jersey, right? Isn't that how well, it works? I hate both teams because I'm a cap <laughs> fan, but yeah, and Jersey is Jersey, so I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What is, what is, the, what is, what is the, uh, what is the greatest hockey movie of all time? Oh, what's that? The yeah. I'm Snap, not a big hockey person, but Phil Slap, can pre- Slapshot. Slapshot's up there. Go. <laughs> Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks is definitely up what's there. the what's the what's the game about the seven miracle. is it the seventy two miracle. miracle miracle the yeah. miracle about the nineteen eighty Olympic 80, team. I'm not gonna lie, Mighty Ducks might win it. I'm not gonna lie. Goom. I may have teared up at the end of Miracle. <clears throat> yeah, miracle? I haven't I haven't seen it all, Phil. So if, if, I don't know because I'm because you gotta understand if you recognize like. They still Russia still feels national shame over that, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> like, it, 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 it was like and, how and we still like paid for Alaska yet. Yeah. Were and the, basically, you didn't have professionals in the Olympics back then. But basically, the Russian guys were professionals. They were paid by the state to play hockey. They went and beat a bunch of NHL all stars like ten nothing right before the Olympics, right, in an exhibition game. And we beat them with a bunch of college kids. And you gotta realize that the national pride, people way people thought about this country was in the dumps in January of 1980. We've had hostages over in Iran that hadn't been rescued in over a year. Uh, it was just everybody's feeling miserable. We're in the middle of it. Like, we're coming off the coming off of the gas shortage. Everybody's just like hating life. And then this yeah. happened. And it's like this moment, and when you recognize what it is, it's like and you and you know the history behind it. It was acted very well, and that call by Al Mar- Michaels, by the way, is still the greatest call in the history of sports. Um, the whole "Do you believe in miracles?" Yeah, so that movie, yeah, it, it hits me. It hits me in a in a, in a patriotic spot, right? right yep. here. I feel you. What's up, Yam? Yam is no longer in Japan. Yam is in uh, back in the United States of. America, so welcome back. Uh, yeah, we uh, oh, had a little fun about yams in Japan. Yeah, that on Twitter. No, no more, no more yam in Japan. No, 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 no. Let's still I be yam in Japan. Yam in Japan. 
turned up my uh, gain a little bit. He will still be Yam in Japan for us. Uh, welcome, George. George Carmi, uh, guest on our show last week. Make sure you guys go check it out. We talked pro days. Uh, some Jaden and some Drake. Uh, George was a fantastic guest, as always. Had him on a couple times. Uh, make sure you go check out his his uh, channel, um, just George Carmi. And he's also doing a, a com- combination uh, rebrand with... Um, the big Doug and Karma show. So make sure you guys check them out. Fantastic dudes in the, uh, in the, uh, content creation scene. Tia, what's up Tia? So I'm loving this look in Washington. That's right. We're going to talk about it. It's a little bit fatiguing. Uh, this episode is called draft fatigue and we're going to talk about it here in just a second. Uh, deluxe is caps to have the fastest line ever brought from a couple seasons ago. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a great brawl by the way. Oh. Go back. It's, it's worth, worth a look. It is worth a look. Yeah. The, Todd Samuel, welcome, Todd. The Jaden Daniels PR team is here. Okay. They are, they are here. Welcome, welcome, Todd. Yeah. I know we have a. How, how much must you suck to have a one man PR team and it's your Uber driver? Mm. Mm. It's all good. Mm. What's up, Ryan from YouTube? Said they knew this was going to happen the last game. There was a dirty hit on Panera, and at the end of the last game, they carried over. So baseball's the same way, man. It just, it just carries over. You, you you don't forget. You know what's coming. You just it's, let it get it out the way. I, I, I this is what I hate about other sports. Is that like it's it it's so frowned upon in other sports. And it's like, man, you're playing a contact sport. People are getting hit, and you're gonna stir up some some emotions. So yeah. it, it's like, all right, you got one of ours <laughs> in the last game. We couldn't get you back. We'll get you back at the beginning of the next one. Steer it up. Let it happen, little darling. Steer, steer it up. You know, and and in hockey, we're in less pads. You're wearing football. You know, they just get up there, they throw a bunch of punches till till people go down. People yeah. go down. Fight's over. You go do your ten minutes, and you come back. Five, you get your five minute major. Ten minutes if you get a double major. Yep. There we go. I I really think football may benefit from allowing a little more. Yeah. In that Deluxe says slap shot miracle mystery Alaska. George says mighty ducks for sure. That's right, George. That was my my lone contribution. I would argue that uh Blades of Glory could kind of be a hockey movie because it's played on ice. It's not Glory. necessarily hockey. Oh, uh, Blades talking about <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that one. Blades of <laughs> John Glory, Heather but... and uh John Heather. Now, if you want a good uh, hockey uh, show, sure. Napoleon Dynamite. Was it was Shorzy. it called? If you want to watch a good hockey show, sure. Will Ferrell. Shorzy. Yeah. Have you watched Letter Kenny? I have not, not yet. Okay, it's a spinoff of Letterkenny. Okay, there's a lot of hockey in Letterkenny as well, but they spun off one, Fair. Of, one of the best characters from that show into his Fair. own Fair, Fair so enough. It's, it's good. Yam says, "Miracle Goon Slap Shot." There we go. All right. Um, <laughs> George says, yeah, "He will always be Yam in Japan." That's right. That is right. Marcus Elin, uh, busiest man in, on uh, on Facebook. Says, "What's up, Commanders Podcast family? What's up, Marcus? Make sure you check out Marcus Sports View too on Facebook. Sharing all the content. Um, all right, let's just would, get right would, into it. Would, would uh, the um, she's out of your le- she's out of my league be a hockey movie? I don't. Is that the one with Bradley Cooper? No, uh, it's the one where dude, uh, Brooklyn Decker, right? I think she's the girl that's in the movie. Maybe she's out of my league. I don't think she's I, don't, I haven't seen it. Can't it's funny. It. It's funny as hell. You should watch it. I don't think it's Brooklyn Decker, by the way. I got her name off of it. But if I, I had watched it and it's a comedy, Paul Rudd's probably in it, right? He's not in it, but it is a Paul Ruddish type of movie, <laughs> though, for sure. It's funny though. You should watch it. It's funny. It is. Yeah. She's out of my. She's out of my league. It came out 2010. It's got a. Uh, I'm trying to get a Alice Eve. I keep getting her broken there. Alice Eve. You know who she is right. It's got a uh, Jay uh, Barnshell in it. The, the, the. It's got T.J. Miller. He's in there. He's funny. He's one of his. Oh, not for sure. I for sure ain't seen it. Yeah, Kristen oh, Ritter. Kristen Ritter. It's a hockey movie. Yeah, it's a hockey movie. Is it? I mean, it, it, technically, it's a hockey movie. They're like. A lot of the parts of it. Jay, it's got Jay Baruchel in it. Yeah. Oh, Jay. Got it. Um, the guy from all this movie, All his movies have hockey in it, by the way. <coughs> what is it? Yeah. He's supposed to be a real life hockey fan. Sometimes. I mean, hockey, I love hockey. It, it's it's hard to always uh, keep up with it just because there's so many damn games. But, man, it's it sure is fun to watch when it is when it is popping, off and popping. Um, 
Pop in, pop in, playoff pop in, pop in. That's right. That's right. Uh, we're going to start out by saying uh, happy birthday to the one, the only Sean Taylor. Uh, you know, our, our last show we had last Thursday uh, was before his birthday, the anniversary of his birthday. But he turned, I don't know how much he turned, 40, April 1st, 1983. So I guess he would have been 41, 41 this year. That's the thing about Sean Taylor. I was born in 83. So like for me, it's like, damn, that was literally like a peer in age. Not in yeah. talent, obviously, but a peer in age. He would have been phony. So like that, that hit me big. Just the fact that it's like, damn, when yeah. he died, I was just like, damn. Yeah, 41. Right now. Happy birthday, Sean Taylor. Uh, there's the street named after you. And uh, I guess we're calling it commander's field now until we get a sponsor but yeah man i think you would have been one of the one of the greats um unfortunately we only got a little bit of you but just wanted to start off by saying happy birthday to uh mr sean taylor man rest in peace we miss you bro all right that being said michael underwood thanks for joining us michael uh, says hockey is brutal yes sir it is man Everyone's not built for that lifestyle. I know I'm not. Football is brutal enough <laughs> for me. Uh, Marcus, it's with the happy birthday to Sean. Same with Tia. Ryan said, bet you'd still be playing. 21 was a different animal. Perhaps. Perhaps. Sean Taylor was playing 41. <laughs> I know. That would be nuts. <clears throat> it would have been nuts. All right, let's jump right into it. So if you didn't know, the team has begun off-season, I guess you could call it off-season activities, if you if you want to say that. I, I don't really know what you what you really refer to these as, but um, just – so on April 1st, te- uh, teams that – I'll read this verbatim. April 1st, teams that hired a new head coach after the end of the 2023 season – can begin the off-season workout program. So if you hadn't noticed on all the socials, if you hadn't noticed the thumbnail of, of this episode, the team's back in the building. Now, they're not doing anything crazy. I think they're mostly doing um, conditioning, and they're calling off-season workout programs, right? So I don't know how much football exactly being played, but uh, go check out some of the pictures, man. It's it's pretty cool to see you know football back in Ashburn. So happy happy to see that. You, you, you can go through and check out a lot of the – Interviews. Um, the interview. The big interviews they had were, of course, Tress. Tress had a big interview, and then um, Terry McLaurin and Sam Cosme. I think were the main ones. Maybe Deron Payne got in on it too. They didn't. They didn't interview everyone, um, but they did interview uh, Tress. And one of the things about the Tress interview, um, which was pretty cool, was that one of the things. And Terry said it too. Dan Quinn. He started off by saying, everyone who was here last year, raise your hand. So everyone raised their hand. And if you're so, – so what he essentially did was sit next to someone else who wasn't here last year. So what he's trying to do is instill that sense of you know, camaraderie. You need to get to know all these guys. And, and every single player that spoke gross. talked about that. So it was, it was pretty cool. I just thought I'd point that out there. Did you guys just get to see any of the, uh, any of the interviews that they did? I caught some bits and pieces across social media. I have sat down and had an opportunity to watch any of the full length interviews, but like a question here, a question. Yeah. Tress, Tress, I mean, I guess he talked to Dan Quinn for like 30 minutes, man. 30, 30 minutes straight up. You know, a punter, right? A punter, which we'll talk about here shortly about um, jersey numbers here, but a punter who's probably one of our most respected players on the team, right? He I, should, I mean, he's, he, he's, he's the captain at this point. Yeah. He, he's been there with the team the longest. He's the one that in terms of individual accolades mm-hmm. has done more than anyone else. If you want to talk about awards and such demand, demand was, was, was all pro. When was the last yeah. time we had anybody all pro? It's been a long time. Not just pro bowl, all pro. So. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a long time. I will show a couple couple tidbits of his of uh, the tr- just the Tressway one, because um, I think it's there's, there's some cool nuggets you can take take out of there. I'll let you make your own uh, conclusions from them, but we'll we'll play a few minutes of this. What's up, John? Good. How are you, man? 
You can't hear some of you next to me that uh, I've never played with uh, in the locker room, getting to chat with them every single day, getting it all mixed up with different guys in the uh, workouts and uh, and then starting to ramp up competition stuff. So it's very, very cool, like clear mindset of what this period is. Crystal clear video, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think. um I think that's such a that's got to be such a fun part of coaching um, is you're, you're looking at these you're looking at these dudes that are professional football players. And how how can you, you know, galvanize all of us and bring us together uh, towards a common goal whenever we're all wanting to have our success, our teammates success, um, uh, our entire franchise success. And so I think that it's been cool to just see even quickly um, how how the day is operated, where we're all biggest thing um i know something that i try and do um you know as one of the veterans in the locker room i just like to empower guys uh you know things that they do well and even just whether it be something in workout all right we're not gonna we're not gonna belabor that but <laughs> it's kind of the sense of how it went you're just kind of slowly slowly getting back into the groove of things and but football's back football's back in ashbury and it's been it's been kind of nice uh, ag ag from uh youtube thank you for joining us we appreciate you son taylor might have been able to play at 40 perhaps perhaps i don't know any safeties that really want to play it for you <laughs> by then they're usually beat the shit with, especially with his um <clears throat> especially with his his whole uh style and it just i don't know why any any safety want to play at age 40 you're gonna you're gonna have the greatest case of cte ever known to man the way yeah he did. yeah he, had, he was fearless and most of his arrow have been played before they really started toning down the hits. That's right. Um, Michael says, what do you guys think we will pick at 36 or will they trade? Dev, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I think they'll trade back in to the first to pick up a, a you know, it's unless I think they'll pick up a tackle, hopefully, or someone that is uh, not supposed to be there. Uh, yeah. I think, I think that's what they'll do. I think they'll get a tackle or best player available if somebody crazy is available. Yep. What about you, Phil? Same. I'm thinking that's a, definitely a possibility. <laughs> or if some, or if it appears somebody that they like as a left tackle is going to slide back into the second round just due to maybe other teams reaching for skill position players late in the first instead of getting that. And somebody yeah. slides back like a Jordan Morgan makes it out of the first Man, round. They're, like they're, yeah, they said that like five to six tackles could go in the first round. Then you're looking at six quarterbacks probably going in the first round. Then you're looking at about four to five wide receivers. I mean, yeah, that's going to be that's going to someone's going to fall. Somebody's and, falling. And, and then there's the obvious ones like the tight end from uh, Georgia and and the defensive end from Alabama. It's obvious those guys are uh, are going in the first round too. So so yeah. I'm like, man, there's going to be some guys. At, at uh thirty six, we had right thirty six and forty two. Was that what we were picking? So I, I, I'm with you guys. I think we take that thirty six pick, trade back into the first to get. I, I'm with you. A left tackle. I think it's gonna be a left tackle. Man, I think we should trade both of them. <clears throat> trade but both of them and get then get two more first. You rounds. also have the fortieth pick. Yeah. So they'll probably sit pat at forty. So you come in at the end of the first, you get number two. I don't know, 27, bro, 28, bro, I trade, 29, I trade both 30. of them get back in the first. I trade the second round, the 36 and the 40, and get two more first. I trade and give out some maybe fifth and fourth and get fifth. back in twice, two more first. Round the fifth. Terrence Perry, what's up, Terrence? Our brother from another mother, Eagles fan, the mean green, been on the show multiple times. Love you, Eagles man. Thank you for tuning in. Eagles ain't shit. But hoes and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny uh terrence while we have you i do want to sh- <laughs> you're not gonna like this you're not gonna like this at in the least but i think i have to play it because it's freaking hilarious man so the rock <laughs> if you haven't seen it the rock was in philadelphia tonight and total 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 like uh disrespect to philadelphia and it was the funniest thing ever i'm gonna play this and y'all just <clears throat> Get a kick out of this and ask, wonder why he was late. Check it out. It's so funny. Rock in Philadelphia tonight. Late for WWE. Are you booing because the Rock was supposed to be here at 4 o'clock? Is that why you're booing? 
You're booing because The Rock was a little late. Is that why you were booing? <laughs> why was The Rock late? You want to know? You want to know why The Rock was late? Are you sure? You want to know? Why The Rock was late? He was watching YouTube. Watching Jalen Hurts lose in the playoffs again. <laughs> How great is that? Oh, Heel Rock has been back and it's been wonderful. How great is that? Ready? Again. Oh, watching Jalen Hurts lose in the playoffs, man. I, I, as this, I'm guessing this is a role he's playing, but I just thought I'd, I'd play he's, that. Yeah, he came back. He was supposed to be the big baby face. Everybody got mad because people love sucking Cody Rhodes' dick yeah. over there. So <laughs> they rock side. All right, I'll be the bad guy. And now he's just become the most memeable dude in the history of, of, of anything. Yeah. He's out there in his cowboy hat, and he says, Off is where you can go fuck. <laughs> Nice, nice. Uh, Nationals uh, cherry. Is that a cherry blossom bucket? Yeah, I see it's a very good bucket. Very nice. I like it. Todd says Tressway got to give out that number five to Jaden. We're gonna talk about that in a second, Todd. So just just hold that thought. Nah, man. Nobody nobody's over Tressway. Hold Not that right now. Thought. The only person getting a number from me is Jesus, and he got at least ass nice. I should I should have worn my Tressway jersey, but. Uh, Ryan said, Payne said it felt like being a freshman at Alabama all over again with all new players. This team had 20 new players on the roster. I can't say when we've ever had 20 new players coming. And we don't even have a full team. Like we got 20 new players. I don't even know what the current roster count is. I probably would have to go look, look at it. But we're going to talk uh, uh, jersey numbers here in a, in a second. Actually, let me see. Uh, I think I got the number right here. Yeah, VM said, did you get new eyes? Not sure what he's talking about. No, nah, man, he's the same old rims. Oh, uh, Deluxe says was messaging with Lock and Fur all that night. He was trying to answer all fans. Respect for forever that I call that. I called out of work when the news broke. I'm not sure what he's talking about. What were we talking about? Oh, uh, the Sean Taylor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Oh uh, yeah, 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 man. Um, that, I think that uh, Drake May is uh, meeting with Patriots today, and Jaden Daniels is meeting with them tomorrow. That also came out. Also, also, um, yeah, it, that, a lot of people were saying, well, Drake May's not meeting, or Jaden Daniels isn't meeting with the Patriots, so he's coming to the Commanders. It was just announced that Jaden Daniels is also meeting with the New England Patriots. So, dun, dun, dun. saddle up, saddle up, it's coming. So, so there are currently 73 players active and one exempt on the roster right now. Okay, man, we were we only had like at one point when we were doing all the offseason content, like 40. Yeah, we were down big. They, yeah, they've definitely been uh pumping this up. I'm trying to see who the one in, inactive is. I think it was 43 people. Yeah. It was crazy. Who is that? I don't know. Oh, we even got a guy off the international pathway program. But uh um, Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that with the new sightings here. Uh, yeah. but just to show that that According to Mr. One Ian Rapapapapapapapapaport, um, Heisman Trophy winner uh, Jaden Daniels is set to meet with two of the top three teams in NFL draft. First up, he'll head to New England on Monday to meet with the H. Excuse me, with the Patriots. So there it is. And you know what's funny? You know what FanDuel Sportsbook did? Check this out. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, it kind of fits. They didn't waste a second. I'm I'm curious to see what the uh, how this teased the the numbers for for gambling <clears throat> and betting. If anything, they're not stupid. Of course, they're going to do it. They probably did the same thing. I could probably go find one for for Drake or, or someone. But yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. But he's coming. Um, Todd says PFF eating krill with all Jaden Daniels hate and Drake May being overhyped. Uh, oh. I don't know. Huh? What's up, Dave? It's at Boo Eagles oh. at Terrence. Thanks, thanks for tuning in, Dave. Um, oh. Marcus says trade thirty six and forty two to get back in the first round. I don't know if it'll cost that much. No, it just costs one of those and probably 30, 36 and forty. I think yeah. it'll cost just one of them. I think thirty six is. I'm clearly thirty six yeah. is thirty six and, and then and then a, and then a fourth or fifth rounder. 
And then you can trade yeah. 42 with another for the fifth rounder. Fuck you. You got to <clears throat> get back in the first. You again. have two thirds get as back well. In the first, get back in the first twice, bro. You have two thirds. You know why? All the draft capital that this team has been acquiring, like the trading of Sam Howe, all, all these things matter. Look at that. 40, 36, commanders, 40, commanders, 7, commanders, commanders trades matter, bro. They do when they never mattered before. Controller, we got something going. Commander trades lives matter, bro. We got something going. Let let, let Adam Peter do do his thing. I don't know. With next year's draft to be uh, leaner, maybe trade some future capital for extra picks this year. I, I, yeah, Peter has already kind of done that. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised. You know, that's sort of the sort of the things that that they're doing. But so the, so the fellows are back in Ashburn. It's it's nice to see. Um, Leave it at that. New signing. So over the course of a week, we didn't get to talk about all the new signings, but there's been plenty of new signings the commanders have have banged out over the last what five, six, seven days, I guess. And we are going to introduce them to all of you. All of them to you. We probably don't know who all these people are. And that's okay. A lot of them may not be here come opening day. Because <laughs> some of these folks I ain't never heard of. But you know what? I'll show you guys. What's up? Starting number one. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong venue. We signed Mr. Hold on. Hold on. I lost it. Zoom out a little bit. Running back Jeremy McNichols from the Tennessee Titans. People are saying that uh, Jeremy McNichols is going to be a special teams guy. So if it is, then hey, I'm, I'm with it, right? He, we have uh, Larry. I'm um, sorry, Larry Izzo. Um, Izzo was the last name, the Seattle special teams coach. Yeah. yeah. And his units were his units were always top top five every year in Seattle. So uh, for us to have Jeremy McNichols, I think that's a pretty, pretty cool thing. I don't see him, you know, you guys don't see him doing anything at running back, do you? With No, I mean, the yeah. thing is, is that is, um, need somebody to run a bond practice. <laughs> well, in, in workouts here pretty soon, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, if he really somehow, uh, um, fifth round pick in Tampa of 2017. There you go. He, yeah, he's a journeyman guy. I mean, he's just signed to the long. Niners practice squad. So that's probably how he has the connection to Peters. But my thing is, is that I think that he is the kind of guy that, you know, if he somehow can slide past Chris Rodriguez at the bottom of the depth chart, he may be able to do that. I mean, he's not a bum. He's it's crowded. Good special teams. Other than that, I mean, he's just, he's, he's a jag. But yeah. he was good on special teams. In the 2021, sorry, 2020 season, he rushed for 360 with one touchdown and had 295 yards receiving and another touchdown through the air. So, I mean, hopefully a special teams guy. I don't, I don't know much more about him than that. But Yeah, that was the year that uh, Derrick Henry was hurt. Okay. Yeah, I saw him because he split time in the backfield with uh, uh, Dante uh, Foreman. Yeah. Dante Foreman? Who's the guy? He's Deontay. in Chicago now. Deontay? F- you know what? I don't know. I don't know. Deontay know. Foreman. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thought, yeah. For sure. And I liked Foreman. I couldn't remember his name because uh, it's been a long day. But, yeah. yeah, it was him and McNichols split time in the backfield when um, when Derrick Henry got hurt. And he's capable. Like I said, I mean, you know, it's not like he's a guy who can't do something for you. It's just that we do have a pretty loaded uh, locker room as far as the uh, the running back room is concerned. Yep. And then moving on to the next person we signed. We signed a wide receiver. I don't want to mess this name up here, but his name Phil, do you want to read that? Oh, take, a, oh, take a stab. Okay, okay. pass that <laughs> off to me. Thanks, Steve. Oh, Dev, okay. Dev, Dev, you read it. All of my heart is uh, Zacchaeus. 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 It looks like Zach Hose. <clears throat> Zach House. House. Zach House. Oh, that's Hose. Yeah. You throw an X between that U and the S. If he drops from me past, we're going to call him a Zacchaeus. That's what we're going to call him. Don't be a Zacchaeus. Catch the ball. That's all we care about. That's right. That's right. Uh, hashtag Llama Day is his 
is his name. So a little bit about uh, Zacchaeus uh, spent six years in the NFL, uh, undrafted free agent, signed with the Falcons in 2019. He's appeared in 72 games, 24 starts, 104 receptions, 1,492 yards, 10 touchdowns in his career, four years with the Falcons, and spent last year with the Eagles. All right, Tia gave us the pr- correct pronunciation, everybody. It is pronounced whoop, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Thank you much. But we put your names a lot on this show. Sound like so. cheap, it sounds like a it sound like a car you bought for Wish Network. Or for Wish Network. <laughs> uh, can I get the uh Zacchaeus uh XLT <laughs> oh, model? My goodness, Pro Football Reference has that pronunciation. So it's o- Olamade Zacchaeus. Olamade. Olamade. Now, now that you say it, it looks simple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Of course, that's yeah, when the it's exactly how it looks. <laughs> that's when the bell goes off. Oh like, yeah, my name is fucking oh, yeah. Sean Devereaux. I have the right. Yeah. To, I reserve the right to make butcher somebody's fucking name. You know what? My last name is is not still... easy to pronounce either. <laughs> nah, it's, it's easy to pronounce it. It's easy to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> All you gotta do no, is put crying. Comfortable to pronounce. Just crying, and then you can say, you know, I literally have told people, it's like, how you pronounce your last name? I go, cry racial slur. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike, like, Underwood Arnold think- like Arnold Schwarzenegger, except not like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Michael Underwood says, Punt returner. I probably was talking about uh, McNichols before, McNichols, and, yeah. and, and and we're going to talk about here at the end of the show, uh, Michael, about the new NFL kickoff rule because <clears throat> I think the, the era of the punt return, excuse me, the era of the kick returner is. It might be back upon us, so stay tuned. We'll get to that here at the end. It's huge now. Yes. Uh, ben Harlow, thanks for joining us on YouTube. Said, you're right, Phil. I think my running back course sucked at fantasy, and McNichols was on the bench. Holy smokes. You must have been hurting for uh, for people there. Hurting I've for had a spark. To, I've had, I've had <laughs> to run the like, <laughs> erection <laughs> selection. Back up, Ben. <laughs> She I've was a hoe for show. Get some of that erection selection. Another yeah. movie with Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take you to the Eiffel Tower and make love to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I, 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 a bunch I, of guys. I, I, co-hosts are the only guys who just quote Paul Rudd movies. <laughs> hey, man. That's love. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> you know, just, that's love. just love. She just went somewhere and blew a bunch of guys. You know. <laughs> But that's love, man. She changed her love, number, ran away. But that's love. <laughs> All right. The next person we signed was um, Michael, uh, Walker. Michael Michael Walker uh, from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Anybody anybody want to tell us a little bit, Mike Michael Walker? I don't know if you have I'll any say, insights. Can I go back to Zacchaeus for a second? <laughs> yeah, man. in six seasons, uh, one hundred and four receptions in the NFL. He didn't do too much with Philly last season. He only had 10 catches, but the year before that, he had 40 uh, for the Falcons in 17 games played, 13 started. Uh, so, I mean, he's capable. He's, he's done more than somebody's going to fight for a roster spot. He's done, he's done more than somebody that's been keeping the roster spot on this team out of the second round for a couple of years now. No, Naomi Brown. Day droppy, you know? they call him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, and then, yes, and then you're right, Michael definitely. Walker. Keeping in in these stealing guys who have played for Atlanta wow. in recent years, he's another one uh, who started 12 games for Atlanta in 2022. Um, you know, had 107 tackle. He had 107 tackles for him as well. Uh, pay, played eight games with Pittsburgh last year. I assume he must have been hurt or something. I don't don't know for sure. Yeah, uh, I don't keep that close of tabs on everybody. Um, but from what I'm looking here, yeah, I mean, he had ascended to a uh, pretty good spot in Atlanta. Like I said, had 107 tackles, uh, has four interceptions in four years at uh linebacker. He can play the outside and the inside. He's played both. So yeah. versus those <clears throat> days, he's more of a primarily an outside linebacker, 6'3", 230. Uh, so he's kind of, you know, tall and he's, he doesn't have necessarily a yep. large build, but yeah, he's a guy that provides good depth. I think. Yeah. And, and Michael says it nicely here. It sounds like these guys are depth and special teams, which is good, but also these guys are, let us see where we can put you next season. That's, that's true. I think that's okay. Um, Yam says, who has a fantasy football league for next season? <clears throat> I haven't played in nine years. Yam, we got you. There's, we we always have a uh, 
Washington Football Addicts Facebook group. We're, we have a we're on our year four. Someone always drops, so I'll make sure we we hit you up, uh, get you in there. I think it's a fifty dollar, thirty five, forty dollar. But I don't know, 40, something like that. Yes, we're going to talk about Jeff Driscoll and actually Todd uh, for the next transition. I, I think that was a a good transition onto the next year. Now that, that Todd brought that up, let's talk about uh, Jeff. Sex, baby. Let's Jeff. talk about <laughs> all the good things and the bad things. All right. Jeff Driscoll, quarterback. Browns. We signed Jeff Driscoll. Now, isn't this, isn't there uh, some talk about you normally all the backup quarterbacks have to be in line with the scheme that you're going to run? Isn't that a thing? To make it, correct me if I'm wrong. He's pretty fast, I think, though. Isn't that what people say? Like, your, your, your backup's going to be part of the, the scheme that you run. So we have. Marcus Mariota, we have Jake Fromm, we have Jeff Driscoll. This still got some wheels, man. He's 31. Okay. He was not signed to come in and challenge. I don't know what he was signed for. I honestly don't. Can't I, really, I really don't. Camp right. arms are fine. So, so let's let's talk about Jeff Driscoll here. Let's talk right. about Jeff so Driscoll. Not a not a large amount of sample size on this guy. In five seasons, he's played. Florida, four, four games and started 12 of them, right? Now we're going to talk about the rushing here. So in 24 games, he does have eight, eight, 80 rushes for 417 yards. So we have now, granted, he doesn't start all these games. So he started speedy, speedy, speedy. It's not bad, though. I mean, he does average uh, 5.2 yards per attempt. Uh, biggest sample size is Keem his first two years where he had uh, 25 carries for 130 yards in nine games, five starts, and three games with three starts in Detroit. He rushed 22 times for 151 yards, averaging 6.9 yards a pop. Um, Passing-wise, you know, and it's in 24 games, 12 starts, has uh, a little has an under 59% completion percentage, uh, 16 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Um, you know, pretty pedestrian, really. Yeah, let's take it forty-three okay. sacks. Chat, what do y'all think about Jeff Driscoll, man? Why? <laughs> Give us your thoughts. He's probably a camp body, but let us know what you think about Jeff Driscoll. Um, Yam said he's only thirty-one in the possible Fromm replacement, right? Maybe they don't like Jake Fromm. I mean, Jake Fromm's only been in the league for what four years. It's funny how he went from being on top of the world in Georgia, coming to the league, and nothing. I remember when it was like uh, when he played against Louisville and they whooped they, they Louisville whooped their ass. Are you talking about when he played for uh, Florida? Georgia? Florida. Florida, yeah. He, did he transfer from Florida to Georgia? No, no, you're talking oh, about Jeff Louisville. Driscoll. Yeah, Driscoll. Oh, sorry. I, sorry, I, went to, I, I was talking about Jake Fromm. Oh, okay. Uh, my bad. Jake yeah. Fromm. I was just thinking maybe they don't like Jake Fromm. I don't know. Do we, do we normally – I guess we normally do go into camp with four bodies, right? We had um, – let's go back a couple years ago. We had Carson. We had Taylor – so right we now, had Jordan drafted, Tamu. You know, it, so this is this is just this just sounds funny. If we were to somehow not draft a quarterback, our quarterback room would be Jeff Driscoll, Jake Fromm, and Marcus <laughs> Mariota. Do it, oh, dude. Do it, oh, do, dude. It. do it. <laughs> now, yeah. let me now, ask you. Y'all hey, want to do okay. the same? That's how you chat, do. Chat, 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 chat. Guys, would you be upset if yep. they trotted out? Draft. Let's say we draft the guy who you want, whoever that is, JJ, Jaden, Drake, whoever, Tom Brady. Would you be mad if they trotted out Marcus Mariota week one? And let's say for a few games, Dev, would you be mad if Marcus Mariota started the season? Sure. If you're in the chat, let us know. 100% mad. You would be mad. Yeah. Because okay. the whole year is going to be about the quarterback. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just like last year was about uh, how this year is going to be about whoever we draft that quarterback. That's who this season is going to be about their development. Now, when yeah. it, when it, when it, hopefully is a byproduct of that. But if not, uh, you know, developing a, a quarterback, knowing you have a franchise quarterback, will be a great consolation. <laughs> yeah, uh, Michael says getting rid of Fromm. He's a Ron guy. They are slowly dismantling a lot of the the the, the Ron. Uh, Hell, fucking Saints, Saints got more Ron guys than we got. Yeah, Phil, would you be mad if they trotted out Marcus Mariota week one, regardless of if we got the guy who you want them to get? 
Yes, because I'd wonder what 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 went wrong. Right. It, it could I be know a, what went wrong. I didn't, actually I, let me rephrase. Could be, could it. Be I would Ballard. be mad if we draft a quarterback at two, even if it's not the guy I want. And realistically, I don't have right now, other than Caleb Williams, I don't really have a guy I want. And that includes Jaden Daniels. I shit on Jaden Daniels a lot because of old Todd and Todd. <laughs> but because some you gotta have balance in the force. So if he's gonna be the yeah. dark side, I gotta be the light. But um my thing is is that if you draft a quarterback at two and in in the 2024 20, NFL, if they're not starting, I want to know what's going on. Something went wrong. Yeah, okay. I can go over that one. Marcus said Bridgewater and Louisville smoke Driscoll in the Sugar Bowl. There yeah, you go. Definitely. I went to that game, by the way. Did you? Yeah. Sure. Timothy Calloway, thank you for joining us on YouTube. Says JD talk is fun, but once all the smoke clears, Drake is the guy. Wow. And uh, on that note, just want to say a quick thank you for everyone watching this. We really appreciate it. Please make you, sure you uh, hit that like button while you're here and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you are on Facebook, just flip over to YouTube and uh, for a better experience and, uh, and join us over there. And uh, just also note that this podcast is also available on all your audio, audio, ah, all of your audio podcast platforms if you want to check it on the replay. So, yes. Uh, Michael says, I know these players better be in great shape because they said it's going to be fast and physical on both sides of the ball. Joe Witt Jr. says, we're going to be playing violent. Remember that? He said oh. violent. By the way, I, while, we're, violent. while I'm thinking about it, uh, that same game when Louisville played Florida, uh, they had a they had a linebacker that like smoked Teddy Bridgewater the first play of the game when he was thrown out. You know who that linebacker was? Uh, Florida? Yeah. Dante Fowler Jr. No, John Bostick. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, super athletic. Yeah, super he was athletic. Fucking, he was a beast at Florida, bro. Uh, no, that's John all I'm going to say. Beast at Florida. Uh, Tia said she would be angry if they tried it out, Mariota. Marcus said he would be angry. Uh, AG says no, Yoda. Um, and then they're arguing about May and Drake, or Man, May and Drake, JD in the chat. Drake is, I love it. I love Drake, it. Drake May is not Luke Skywalker. That dude is Jar Jar Binks, bro. Luke Skywalker, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, that's super racist. <laughs> see, 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 see. Jaden. Did you know a fun fact? Did you know I don't that? want to be Darth Vader. Can I explain why I don't want to be Darth Vader? What happened? What What was revealed when they took off Vader's helmet? And did he had uh, a British accent? Uh, uh, Realized he wasn't black. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it he wasn't James Earl Jones. Yeah. Evil old white man. I don't don't want want don't don't know. I don't want to be on that side. Yeah, you at least Fatality. you at least want to be like General Grievous or somebody cool. You know, yeah, in the mall or something. Michael says Mariota will start no matter what. This isn't a winning season for us. Just see what we need for next season. So I am like that too. And especially if we get Drake May, I, there's no need to trot him out. Don't. Last week, if you remember when we had George on the show, we specifically read a quote from Adam Peters. That said, there is no need. You know what? I'm going to read it again because I have it in my notes right here. It says, how ready are they? You have to weigh that. And how much work do they have to do? And how can you get them there? With the guys we have in the room right now, I don't think we have to rush anyone. There's a great thing, whether it's Marcus or Jake, we're not going to have to rush whoever we draft. If we draft a guy, we wouldn't have to rush him into playing right away. That's not how we work anyway. We're going to play the person who gives us the best chance to win. That's so me, Adam me, Peters directly. Let me let me say this. I do think that a little bit of – I well, I expect that they're going to start. I mean, they, they say that, but I, I expect differently. Um, but at yeah. the same time, I do think – Age and experience does come into play too. I will be more mad if they draft Jaden Daniels and he doesn't start after five years in college. Yeah. Then Drake May with two. I, I feel like that quote only refers to Drake May. I really I, I really do. I think the other yeah, guys would be able I, to come I mean, in and play right away. But there is there is a there is a bit of a of, of a difference in expectation because one's 20 with two years of college, one's 24 with five years of college. Yeah, I mean, look at Justin Herbert. He only played because the trainers punctured Tyrod Taylor's lung, and he never looked back on the Chargers. And so, 
I think that was I forget what game of the game of the season that Mariota was. Six, out there. I'm the coming first out game of the year. I'm I'm so, think I'm, I'm, if Mariota trots out, I don't remember. Starter, I'm sliding into the locker room with a long needle. <laughs> Todd says uh, Tia secretly loves Jaden Daniels, but her Carolina folks would be mad. All right, let's get on to the last and final signing. We have signed. Dev, you want to take a you want to take a stab with this, Dev? Hi, 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 guy. Shit. Chisholm, Chisholm. I got it, by the way. Okay, I'm going to guess. Hagai, Hagai Chisholm, Nabusi. 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 I don't know. What does it feel? It's Hagai. It's Hagai. Oh, Hagai. Chisholm. Chisholm. And Nabusi. Ah. Haggy Chisholm in the BC. We're going to call him Haggy. Now, here's yes. the thing about this dude. International Player Pathway Program. International Player Pathway Program. He is listed as a defensive lineman. Um, here's where this gets interesting. Because this is one of those you can't coach this. Yep. He is 6'7 and 323 pounds. Oh, oh smokes. left tackle. Left tackle. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we had somebody now, holy now think, shit! I hear that a defensive t- uh, defensive tackle, and if you're a long a, time fan, six seven three what? Six seven three twenty three. Dexter I Manley? Think, huh? Dexter Manley? I'm just guessing. Yeah, I don't Dave know. Butts. Who? Dave Butts was. Dave Butts was was here for ten seasons as a defensive tackle at six seven three hundred. And he was an absolute Dexter Manley and Charles Mann. Part of the reason why they ate on the outside was because of the inside play. And we had, you had Daryl Grant, yeah, and Dave Butts. And Dave Butts was a beast of a human <laughs> being. And he was also just a little crazy. Um, yeah. Had his pregame witch- ritual. They're coming down the uh, George Washington Parkway, and uh, he would hit, he would determine how good his game was going to be by what kind of roadkill he'd hit. Nice. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's how we got F.A. Obata as well on the International Pathway. We in before, so year before, and then, Obata was already in the league. He was. Okay. We got, that's how we, we got. Had, we had uh, Samus, Samus Re- Reyes. Samus Reyes. The oh, slaying oh. Chilean. Never did shit. Never did Never shit. Did. All the athletics in the world. He didn't. I mean, he was also buried number four on the depth yeah, chart too. So Somewhere else didn't do shit either. No. So, uh, I mean, you went to Philly. You're still in Philly, right? People call him. People say my name is he ain't shit. Yeah, he ain't shit. Because <laughs> every time I come around, question. people be like, he ain't Hold shit. A- AG asked a question. He says, is Washington that bad? Sorry. I, I think it might surprise the NFL nine wins. Um, Smiley, you I, sound like you smoke. I want, I'll have what you're smoking, AG. It's it's hard to tell until after the draft. I, the draft is really going to determine where I think this team's going to go this coming season. Right. I don't. I see this team being built for 2025. Mm-hmm. Realistically, to make and I think that's what they're, they're going to make a hard push for 2025. What they're doing is they're trying to completely rebuild the system and what the coaches want quickly. And you said you have a draft. functioning system in place. A functioning system will win you some games, right? And it does attract new talent in for the next free agent class and the next draft class. Um, so. I yeah. think that we're building for 2025. But with the Giants not really doing much, besides Brian Burns, uh, the Cowboys haven't done anything. The opportunity may be there to, to, to be a better, to look better than you were, but don't let that fool you like it did in 2020. Yeah. Don't let it fool you. My thoughts. Take my glasses off for a second. Uh, oop, my bad. Uh, fun fact about the international. Um, player pathway program each of the 32 teams are eligible to fill a 91st roster spot entering the tra- entering training camp and a 17th roster spot on your practice squad which is kind of cool uh, also the broncos didn't extend him an offer last year for a guy i guess he was on the practice squad last year he didn't count on our 16 man practice squad limit due to being an international player and he won't count against our 90 uh 90 man roster limit. So that's pretty cool so it's almost like a internship which could turn into a permanent contract sort of thing so i think that's that's kind of cool right six seven three twenty three you gotta develop somebody like that because 
you got to think of all the deflected passes in the middle. What, what are we gonna play? Lock? What are we gonna play? Uh, fullback. <laughs> hey, why not? Yeah. What's why the easiest not? spot on offense to learn? Guard, maybe. I don't think that's easy. Running by back. the way, I'm just you think I'm so. Looking, the running honestly, back has a block. Honestly, running back has a block, catch, all that shit, man. I don't know. Running back on, the, the easiest position to learn in on offense is running back. Can't be. It you is. Gotta run, you you got to run, block, catch, and do all no, kinds of because shit. because the assignments. The you know because here's the thing you know all those assignments by the time you hit by the time you hit uh high you know high school yeah, you just gotta know the number of the hole you're running to right yeah. so as far as whether you can block well I'm talking about to play I'm oh, you said it, to learn yeah, you to, said to learn all right my bad to play then I I I would go I would go <laughs> I don't end. know man guard tight end tight end still has a catch though you said the hardest. I don't know, man. I think guard would be easier. Um, so uh, here, guard, yeah. let's talk some jerseys numbers here for true, a second. True. These are the new jersey numbers for all the players. Remember, we signed 20, 20 players, right? Un- unheard of in the, around this franchise. Mariota, zero. Mc, uh, Brandon McManus, our new kicker, three. Frankie Louvu, starting linebacker, four. Dante Fowler Jr., maybe starting the end, six. Jeremy Chin, uh, cornerback, 11. <coughs> Zacchaeus! 14, Jeff Driscoll, 16, Igbeno Gehine, 19, um, Michael Davis, 24, uh, Pierre, 29, Eckler, 30, Jeremy McNichols, 31, Bobby Wagner, 54, uh, Pittman, 57, Dieter. Dieter is our new center, I think. I might that. Uh, Dieter is going to be a center. He's a center and guard. He's going to be a okay. uh, backup, but he could push for the other guard spot opposite of. Uh, yep, uh, 60. Uh, Tyler Biatich, 63. That's uh, your starting center. That's your starting center. I forget who was a long snapper. We got a long snapper. Uh, Allegretti, 67. I think he's a guard. Uh, Ott, 69. Uh, Armstrong, 92. And Cleveland Farrell, 99. Uh, you're starting. Uh, I, think, I, think, I, think Farrell, I think Farrell starts over Fowler, man. I just feel that way. Yeah. I think I think Farrell and Fowler, uh, either both they rotate or they're going to both be depth guys. Tim Callow says, "Here's a Jaden Daniels comp for you, Tyrod Taylor. Someone else like worthy. Oh, somebody, somebody Tim, wrote that on Tim, Twitter. Tim Timothy, but Steve peak. up here is a big Tyrod Taylor fan. That's not a, that's not as negative. Hey, him. Tyrod that's had just been crazy. subject to just poor circumstance. I think the dude could have been great. Uh, someone I forget who it was, man. Someone in the national media said what Tyrod Taylor should have been is what Jaden Daniels will be. I think that's what they said." Damn, that was hurtful. <clears throat> well, he had so every time he went somewhere, it was just some stupid freak accident, one after the other, injury you or everywhere. T- 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 no, no, no. I think they're talking about playing ability. So, who knows? But Todd, you can't say Jaden Daniels Lamar two point You just can't. There's only one Lamar. Like I'll say, I'll say it again. The age Jaden Daniels is now. Lamar had two Pro Bowls, an All Pro, an MVP. And I think an AFC chance. Yes, I don't Multiple remember. Playoff births. Multiple play- by the time. I mean, he. I mean, Lamar was what twenty one when he came to the league. Nah, twenty two. Uh, he's just now twenty four. I think. So I say twenty six. Yeah. So, can't say it. Can't say it. Yam's far too sober for this chat. <laughs> um, they must have the luck says Ray is retired last season with the Jags after a concussion. Didn't know that. So while we're talking numbers, Todd says Tressway can take six and give Jaden five. So let me ask you guys this. Looking looking at the available quarterback numbers, and I'm going to pull that up now because I have it, the full roster. There's not that many numbers left for quarterbacks. There isn't. Um, you have 10, you have nine, you have seven. You have fifth, yeah, fifteen or something. I think Dax Milne's still on the roster. No, well, there you go. Here you go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up right now. uh, There you go. You know what? You know what? You know what? Perfect reason to cut Dax Milne. Give him (laughs) fifteen. All right. That can't can't be. I thought Dax played for another team last year. You do not go to. You do not go to Tressway and say, "Hey, you've been with this team ten years. You are statistically." The sixth greatest punter in NFL history. Yes. Look it so, up. He has so, the 
sixth highest punting average in NFL history. So for those still watching, and thank you very much. What do you if if it is Jaden Daniels? All right, because 10 is available. So if we get Drake May, he'll get 10. 10 is available. But if it is Jaden Daniels, should Tressway have to give up number five? We're not going to do that. That's stupid. Let me just show you the numbers that are available. So you have Michael Walker doesn't have one. Mariota is going to be the first quarterback to ever wear zero. That's the way he should matter for these season two, zero. <laughs> John Dotson is one. Dabby Brown, two. He can go kick rocks and move back up to 80s. Brandon McManus is three. Frankie Louvu, four. Tressway, five. Fowler Jr., six. Brian Robinson, eight. Casimir Allen has 10. So if we do draft Drake, I, I see him, you know, he has no leg to stand on. So I see him being a uh, yeah, change your number. Jeremy Chin, 11. Jake Fromm, also 11. I'm not sure who's going to win that battle. Emmanuel Forbes, 13. Zacchaeus, 14. Dax Milne, 15. Dreth Driscoll, 16. D'Angelo Mandel, 16. Whoever the hell that is. Terry, 17. Mitchell Tinsley, 18. Uh, Noah, 19. And that's it for quarterback numbers. So you have 12. You have nine. And you have seven. That's it. 12, nine, seven. You can be any number down, can't you, quarterback? You can be like 93 if you want to. I, do you know what number Trent Dilfer played at when he was at Tennessee? Stupid what? trivia question. 85. 21. He wore 21 yeah, as a quarterback. Yeah, but I, I wonder, Michigan. like, didn't the, didn't the quarterback for Michigan wear 85? I, I think you can. Yeah, but that was because he was a converted he was a converted receiver. Yeah, but I, I think I think now you can twist it anything. You don't have to be under 10 to receive that quarterback know. no more. But, but, no, but, you don't. But, but here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the dumb shit right here. Franchise quarterback gets five. No, you're not a franchise quarterback until you earn that spot. You are not. It's, it's that rookie, spot. rookie quarterback. You are a it's, rookie. Everything you did yeah. in college doesn't mean a fucking thing, okay? Because you are now at your resume is at zero. Your accolades are at zero. Sammy right? Bauer at 33, bro. He did. Go look. He did. Go look, <laughs> he right? did. Go look statistically. Quarterback right? way is one of the greatest punters in the history of football. Granted, okay, he's a he's a punter. But in the modern NFL, special teams mean more than ever. In fact, of the top six guys in career punting average, five of them, including Way, are actively playing. So, and Tressway's been here 10 years. Todd, six is not taken. Daniels can, if he comes in and if he wants to raise a stink about five, suck it like a, uh-uh. an office. Suck it in, suck it uh-uh. in, suck it. What have you earned? Now, if, him, if him and Trey have a conversation, they work it out. That's fine. But you I can't just blanket. You, you just, just can't blanket this day. I'm telling him to tell a story walking. I'm yeah. sorry. Tress Way is a leader on this team. Yeah. Jim Daniels is a rookie. Teddy Bridgewater yeah. wore number 50 for the Lions. <laughs> Did he? Mm-hmm. And by the way, this is an absolute lie because one third of this podcast, thirty three percent of this podcast, I have one. owns a Tressway jersey. I have one. In fact, I think I'm going to buy one. I'm going to go change into it. Yeah, I, need, I need to get a buy. I need to get a Tressway. Uh, Tim Calloway says, "Ex Scout John Middlecoff spoke to people that were at Drake May's pro day and said it's been expected the commands will pick Drake May, and it's been that way for a month." So, Tim, this also aligns with what we we had. I'll put air quotes. Some loose. Why, why do you sound like Jay Gruden when you said some, it? He has some, 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 some way loose, more. loose insider information uh, that kind of confirms this as well. And the yeah. Sam Howell trade was also part of that equation. So when they informed Sam that he was leaving, it's because they had their we eyes kinda, on. We kind of danced around that we did hear this from from some some loose inside information. Yeah. Um, because you know it's 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 not directly out of Adam Peters' mouth or Dan Quinn's. Yeah, but uh, we've we've heard some things from some from from a loose inside source that would know that yep. would have that would know something. G Reese, you too. What's up, bro? Thank you for tuning in. Said Farrell will start and be a first and second down starter. Use Fowler on third and passing situations. Hey, I'm with it. I am with it. Ian Cummings says Turbo Charge Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> yes, that's who it was. Uh, Deluxe is over it. Uh, turbocharged Tyrod Taylor. Last thing we need is for him to, we, we need him to turbocharge himself into an injury like Tyrod managed to always do. Yeah. 
Yeah, Tyron is really unfortunate. He's like Niles Paul. Yep. Um, the Lux says nine is sunny, seven at Thiesman, seven's been used, nine hasn't for a long time. It's not retired. So I in my opinion, retire it or use it. There is no unspoken rule. Not, if it's yeah, available, we'll say nine it. is retired. Sonny's jersey yeah, has been retired. retired. 33, man. Get 33 for Sammy Ball. Is it retired? If you yeah. be pretty sick. Sammy Ball was the only number that was retired for yeah. decades. Well, then it, I'll tell you what, go 50, go 55, man. Do some crazy shit like 99. 69 would be dope. We yeah, just 99 to Cleve Farrell. Hold on if one he, second. If he has 69, right. that would be dope. Probably number two is number two taken. Yams yeah, right. Rest of this jersey is the top selling one on on on, on fanatics. Who? Tressway's jersey is the top seller on fanatics for commanders jerseys. Yeah, for sure. I thought Chase Young was surprised still be. Or McLaurin. I have a McLaurin. I don't have a Tressway. I have a I mean, Dotson. Corn, gonna be up there, but uh, that I have a John Cam Curl. Thing. Unfortunately, I have I have two Cam Curls. I have a black one and a red Cam. I like that oh. red Cam. It's my favorite one to wear. Sorry, right, guys, had to do a mid mid show uh, outfit yeah. swap. Hey, I got I got the Terry McLaurin on. I forgot I had that Terry. How you seeing through me, though? How's this work? It's not a green shirt, but Terry. Terry, Terry. There you go. You're transparent. So yes, people do buy Tressway Trans- jerseys. Translucent uh, on the boys. It, in fact, it was the only jersey to buy for a, a long while. Just because. Uh, can, can you get a, a UFL jersey yet? I think you can. I'm real close to being a, a Memphis. Jer- uh, I'm real close to being a Memphis fan, by the way. I, yeah. I'm watching. I like the way the offense was running. Man, they do some crazy stuff. Nice. Yeah, defenders had a pretty rough start against of the Memphis, season. Was it pretty? Memphis. Yeah. Wasn't pretty. We got um, uh, we got a naga, a naga in the chat. Naga, uh-oh. naga, please. Redskins no more. Our number should be available. Incorrect. Oh, wow. Because if they did that, the same people would complain. They don't honor. They they try to act like that the Redskins never existed. No, I don't no. think this is a naga comment. This is just saying that we're the commanders now. Is that the voice of uh, <clears> the should. voice they used when they did it and they said that? No, they Everyone sound, should be they sound more well like this. Yeah. Adam Schefter is more plugged is in and he knows we're getting Jay. I don't like the fact that they're no longer called <laughs> the commanders. Who do, they're no longer called the Redskins. Who do you like? Who do you like? The same team. Who do you like more, man? Uh, Paul Rudd or Adam Schefter, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um. Jesus. <laughs> All right. I, I have another uh, scenario. Uh, I, wanna, I shouldn't I wanna... say it. Schefter <laughs> actually breaks news that I pay attention to. So, Schefter. Yeah, Schefter. Schefter's now, if you really want to really on... make it hard for me to decide, you should have said uh, um, Paul Rudd or Mike Florio. Because then my answer would have been I would prefer a scorching case of herpes. Oh, yeah. Screw Florio. Because I hate both. I hate uh, Florio. Very, very quickly. Paul Rudd, I just don't get why people like him. And What? Paul Rudd is great. You're tripping, man. This will forever be a thing now in it Commander's Floor, people. I we're know we're going to make a shirt about Paul Rudd or puppies. <laughs> I already um, proved last week I like puppies. Michael, hold that comment about wide receivers. We're going to talk about this in just a second. So Adam Rank, <clears throat> if you know Adam Rank, he was online in one of, one of the shows. Don't don't quote me which which show it was. Uh, I'm going to show it here in a second. Florio is it. Basically said, would you trade the number two pick if you're the Washington Commanders? I would consider it. So let's just hear what he says. Has to say about this. Thank you, Yam. I do agree that <laughs> on the board. The only thing that I would say is if I'm wa- if I'm the Washington Commanders, I pick. there needs to be a new philosophy when you're trying to build a team. You're the number two overall selection for a reason. And I was talking uh, with one of my friends and a fellow an- analyst, Jake Maltese, and we're just like, you know what? It's better off to build a team and build the squad and, 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 and approach it that way. Mm. Now, there's a team at the Minnesota Vikings who are desperate to get up and draft a quarterback. They have two first-round picks this year. I don't know. If you can get two first-round picks from the Vikings, perhaps a first-round pick next season, set your franchise up for the future and then address <laughs> the quarterback position because next season 
You'll have the ability to draft a quarterback, and there are also veterans who could become available. That's Dak true. Prescott Dak. is a player who could be available next year. You look at some of the teams who had success going out there and getting veteran quarterbacks. The Lions have been know. doing it with Jared Goff. The Rams won a Super Bowl with Matthew Stafford. The Buccaneers have won a Super Bowl with Tom Brady. You do not have to draft a quarterback if you're sitting there in the top three. So they had Goff was the number one quarterback oh, in the draft. Like oh, that, that's the point I want to ask you guys about. His last comment: There's going to be veterans available. Dak Prescott. I don't know who else who else is going to be available, but that's, Dak Prescott's sure, going sure. to be available. Sure and he made he is. and he made the point about either getting a rookie for next year acquiring multiple first round picks or a veteran because he used Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, and who was the other one? He he's another example. Does that seem feasible? Jared Goff, Jared Goff was a first round pick like two or three years before that. Yeah, he, he, he was just saying veteran. Like, that's just oh, oh, I'm 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 gonna make a callback. I'm gonna make a callback. A former co host on this podcast, Ellie, made stood on business saying that if a quarterback switches teams, it never leads to success. And then immediately Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford both lead their teams to success. I don't know. Was that um, really successful just because you went to a playoff game? They went to the NFC Championship. Jared Lions? Goff. Did. Oh, yeah, he did. That's right this year. And then Matthew Stafford won a Super Bowl. So I think that, that went to there Bowl. are dynamic. That, that dynamic is, le- is changing in the league as well because Brady won with his second team. Stafford won with his second team. Goff almost went to the Super Bowl with his second team. So and then, speaking of Ellie, I have to give him credit for this. I have to. He and said, Ellie he, called this one three years. Here, ago. Here's the quarterback I want for us to draft and sit up sit up to for a year, sign a vet, let him learn. Jaden Daniels. But this was God, November 8th, 2021. Yeah, November 8th, 2021. That's way before Todd was on that bandwagon. It was. He probably didn't even know who he was at that point. Todd didn't even know who he was until he got into an LSU jersey. But shout out to Ellie for having the foresight that he might be a a pretty decent um pretty decent uh oh, that, 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 he, he's that jersey emphasizes how small how, how slim his frame is i know let's get to this last um 20 seconds i would trade out of it if i'm Washington. so you mean to tell me rank uh the washington commanders will pick quarterback for marcus mariota and jake Fromm. they're gonna win some <laughs> games this year that's a valid marcus question mariota. And Jake Fromm. I mean, that, that's basically. <laughs> and Jeff. Yeah. I mean, there is he was trying to keep a straight face, too, like nigga. He, he said Joe Flacco's still out there. You still have other veteran quarterbacks out there. That you can find some true. other way to do it. But you still have, too. It's a long, it's a long-term play. I, if, the, if the commanders right. were a quarterback away from getting to the playoffs, getting to the Super Bowl, yeah, go, go for Jaden Daniels. But when you're looking at the future of the team, you have a new ownership group. Build the franchise yeah. and approach it that way. Yeah. So, what what do you guys think with that philosophy? Okay. Whoa, what, get him out of here. The Vikings <laughs> pick this year again? Get the rope. Yeah. Um, Timothy Galloway says Adam Rank just wants to finally be right as he puts us in the worst as the worst team every year. It it seems. I, okay. You know, eleven right. twenty three. If you really like a guy like McCarthy or Penix, it's there. Yeah, one of those picks. Ag says no way. I mean, you could move out of the, you could move out of the first and still find your quarterback. I've, I've said I've said this before, man. If you want to be responsible, the responsible thing is probably to trade down and get and try to get like a Marvin Harrison, and all. You might be able to get them both. Like if you trade back, you might be able to get two legit. You might be able to get the tight end from fucking. Uh, the, the fucking Atlanta. I mean, the yeah, the Bulldogs, Georgia. Oh. Bo, uh, Bowers. You might be get <laughs> Brock, him. Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers. You might be get Bowers and all, man, if you fuck around with Minnesota. Like, like I mean, honestly, it could happen. And you could probably still get Bo Nix or Penix in the second round. One of them might be there. Yeah. Like, like some crazy stuff happens. Right? Yeah. Would you, yeah. you end up with Bo Nix, uh, the tight end, and the uh, offensive lineman? Would you yeah. be mad over that? Like, I. It'd be hard to get mad over it, man. The lu- the, has a lot of options. Deluxe is saying, does two extra first-round picks equal building a team? Drafting your quarterback with money saved can replace those two extra first-round shots with premium free agents. Man, we got for, we got a, we got seventy million dollars in money left to get free agents. <laughs> yeah, but uh, also, also number two, man, the we traded 
the Rick Williams pick and got a bunch, a buttload of picks, and none of those guys were good, bro. That's true. So, so I mean, you know, you know, don't pass up for show pussy for some old no pussy. You know, I haven't brought that out this year, I don't think. Nope. Uh, don't pass up for show pussy for some old no pussy, dog. That's what this is. Go get the for show pussy. Go get the ah, ding, 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 ding. That's right. Williams is the pussy you need, man. Yes. Yam says, would Jaden even be in talk for round one, much less top three or four? Had he not hey, pushed out left for Arizona Daniels is a pussy. I'm just saying. Why are we want to draft him then? Uh, G. Reese says, if you draft me, unless you're going to play Mariota for nine weeks, they definitely shouldn't do it. Inconsistency with May is ridiculous. And that's his one downfall is his inconsistency. But it, Ridiculous is such an overblown statement, though. If yeah. he was ridiculously inconsistent, or he wouldn't be this the number he wouldn't two be or three for the number two pick. Yeah, yeah. he's just so young. He's only played. He only had two years of experience. This is a hyperbole I hate, and I actually put pointed this out on um on Twitter. Look, I'm fine with either pick. I'm not fine with the fact that a big hive has formed around one guy who has done nothing in the league. Right. And another guy who was seen as his equal in terms of position, they will throw out the most intellectually dishonest statements about that other guy. And in response, because people look at this hive like, you're awful, they formed another hive. And they're yeah. now becoming awful because they're saying that about Jane Daniels. But the Jane Daniels hive is louder and more ignorant. It's like that. I it's- will say that. I hate that we're having hives form before anybody's actually taking a snap for this team. I mean, yeah. at least Heineke went out and almost won a playoff game. It's like the Highlander, the Kurgan. They can be the only one. The only one. <laughs> I can't remember. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is why I stand on. I make fun of the Jane Daniels thing because I like, I I don't like the hive. But here's the thing. If you're a Jane Daniels backer, if you're all in on this guy, and we draft Drake May, what are you going to say now? Oops, my bad. That's not my quarterback. Yay, May. We know how you felt. You've committed too far. You've You've committed, committed. Yes, you have gone too far in one man's direction. That you are now sacrificed, you are now putting yourself in a position where you are sacrificing your love for the team for one man. Yeah. I mean, two things can be true. They can both be great quarterbacks. I mean, like like Deuce said in our group chat, there's the fence, and I'm sitting on it. And I'm sitting on it with him too. It's okay to sit on the fence because you could be happy with either one of the homeboys you get and I, just I sit on the work. fence, but I look at the fans on one side and do a little bit of this. Todd says cheating JJ and bad knees, Penix, stop it. Penix. Penix is the only trade back option. Really bad nicknames. Yeah, Penix is a good trade back option. People like uh, JJ in the trade back option too, but I don't think JJ is getting out of the top seven. Penix might get you, you could probably trade back and get Penix in the third, the later third of the of the first round. I think. Yeah, Penix. Penix probably goes yeah. before the first round's over. He's too good. Yep. Michael the says, get the talent at quarterback now. Honestly, if you take away the injuries, Penix is, is number two over both Caleb and Drake. Yep. Um, yeah, the talent in next year's draft is not that good. You have Shadur, and that's about it. I mean, y'all act like he's Jesus Christ reincarnated. Like he's, I'm sorry, much. he's Jaden Daniels reincarnated to some of these people. So. <laughs> I think he's a better passer than Jaden Daniels. I think he is. If you watch him play. I think he's a better natural pass than Jaden Daniels. Ooh, Todd, what do you think about that? I don't. You don't? If you, I mean, he's making mountains out of molehills in, in Colorado. It, it, this year should be a little different. I don't know. We'll see. Are you talking about Shador? Shador. I don't. I don't know, man. Like, I, I think I think he's a – he probably will be next year. You know, we'll, like – We'll see. Yeah. I'm going to see some – We things. shall see. Well, we got this quarterback I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. Marcus says if that's the case, Washington Commanders shouldn't have traded Sam Howell. Pick six Knicks is checked down Charlie, according to Sam, or according to Todd. <laughs> Michael says we're getting quarterback at two because we got rid of Sam. Sam is better than Mariota. He is better than Mariota. And I think you're right. I think we are getting a quarterback at two. I, I don't want to trade down. I will say this. You can't discount the possibility because if someone offers you 
the the world in draft picks and capital, you got to at least listen. You got to consider it, all right? You could you don't want to pass up a golden opportunity for one man. But it's got to be a golden opportunity. If the if the Vikings come up and say we'll give you 11 23 and let's see they, cuz they got 11 and 23 in the first round and they don't have anything else this draft. So and a first next year. <clears throat> yeah. You have three first round picks for that number 2? You don't think about it? You got to think about it. I think that's why they're exploring every option, doing due diligence, which was the name of our episode two episodes ago. Yam said, at least May can make passes across the field and doesn't muck up midfield throws as much either. Deluxe says, I literally said this the other day, Highlander, there can be more than one. That's all from my Zach and Mir make a porno. You remember that? When they went to the reunion. I'm the other Zach. <laughs> you remember that? He gets a hand job in the uh, women's bathroom. Yeah, three quarters says, one. <laughs> Wait, you're going to say when we draft JD and he gets hurt? What are you going to say when we draft JD? Okay, that's who's saying. Chris Reed, what's up, Chris? Join us from Facebook. Uh, like I said, our track record of drafting quarterbacks isn't good. We did the running quarterback with Robert Griffin and see where that got us. We did big free agency with uh, Wentz and see where that went. I want a quarterback that's got a good arm but smart too. So you want Kirk Cousins? So you, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Two hundred two hundred and five. We had him pounds. already. We had yeah. him. Ag says Phoenix at a uh, Phoenix Penix at twenty three. Yeah, I think it's about where he's going to go. Between the, that's where I think that early twenty, early to mid twenties is where you can probably get him. Um, I would. Here's the thing: if we were to trade back <laughs> and get Penix, I'd be very happy because you can get something at eleven. That's yeah. Great. Watch this year, Sam or Todd. Watch this year. I think Shadur is going to impress a lot of people. I think he would impress a lot of people. And what if uh, old Nussemeyer puts up better numbers than Jaden Daniels did at LSU this year? What is, what is that going to mean? Because I think he's going to be a pretty good passer too. <laughs> I mean, he, he certainly proved that some of, at least some of Jaden's success came from the system. Yeah. Uh, so I want to propose something different here. There's been some talk about you know, with the Stefan Diggs trade, if you're following that, how the Houston Texans landed Stefan Diggs from the Bills. Um, the Bills are going to incur like 30 plus million dollars in dead cap space. And it only cost the Texans a second round pick. And if they lose Stefan Diggs next year, then they get a compensatory pick or they like what they see and they resign him. So the Texans made a great, a great move. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is I want to talk about Brandon Ayuk trade is starting to gain a little bit of traction around people in the field. I think George, uh, George Carmi who was on our show last week, talked about it a lot too. There's been some discussions and I don't know how much rumors there are to this, but um, trading for Brandon Ayuk. So who was this Gary Davenport? Uh, from Bleacher Report, uh, talked about a trade package uh, that team should be talking to the San Francisco 49ers about. He listed the Cardinals. He listed the Bills, the Chargers, the Patriots, and the Com Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Commanders. And so for the Commanders, I'm going to share my screen here real quick, and then I want to see what you guys think about this. If you think it's ludicrous, if you think it's stupid, if you think it's worth every penny. So for Brandon Ayuk, he says, and I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys. The commanders will get Brandon Ayuk in a sixth round pick of this year's draft, which is number 211. The Niners would get the second pick, which is number 36, the th our round three pick, 67, and Jahan Dotson. So you're trading two picks in Jahan Dotson and getting Brandon Ayuk in a sixth round pick. If you're in the chat, would you do this, Phil? Start with you. Would you make this trade? Mm. Is Brandon Ayuk going to bring that much to your team? Mm. And and there's also some context to this. So that's Brandon before, Ayuk, that's I mean, for a number two receiver that's picked in the first round last year or two yes. years ago. Then asking number, for a second round pick and a third. Fuck y'all. Fuck off. <laughs> No, he's a dick. No, you got to pay him the same way you pay McLaurin. I don't think Ayuk is that good. Man, it's not better. It's better package. than Terry McLaurin. Not for that package. Uh, is Ayuk could, or Brandon Lawrence McLaurin better? Who's better? You, you can make. I, I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Well, you got to realize Terry's you, been a number one receiver. But the only one of us that's, that's like absolutely is Dev. 
No, no, no. I don't think Brandon Ike's Listen, than De- Dev, here's Brandon Ike's numbers from last year. He's only he's I 25. He's I don't think he's better than Jay. He's going into his fifth year. 75 receptions, 1,342 yards, seven touchdowns. Now, the reason why I didn't I didn't get to say it before y'all talk, he had the linkage about Brandon Ayuk was linked to Jaden Daniels because they both played together at Arizona State. That's that's the what that's what I wanted to put in there about why the Brandon Ayuk discussion is kind of gaining a little bit of traction. So Did you trade him straight up for uh, Terry. Yes. Really? Yes. You know why? Because he's on a fifth year, fifth year contract versus Terry making how much? Twenty something million dollars? Of course. But you gotta pay Brandon Ayuk next year. He's probably gonna make more than twenty three million. If Terry that's got twenty three million, what do you think Ayuk was gonna ask for? Probably more than that. Right. So why would you do it? Yeah, two years know, younger. Man. Is he though? Is he? He's I don't 20... think he's. I don't think he's too good. Terry's like 26, 27, right? Twenty seven. He's well. Are know, you, are Alexa, you t- Alexa, how old is Brandon Ayuk? 20, 26. 26 years old. Twenty nine years old. No, he's no. he's born in ninety eight. He's twenty six years old. Twenty nine years old. Twenty six. He's twenty six. I'm looking at it right now. Alexa said twenty nine. Dog, I trust that bitch. My bad. I trust. Uh, <laughs> Alexa, hmm, I don't know that. My bad, Alexa. How old is Terry McLaurin? Alexa, how old is 30. Terry McLaurin? Twenty-eight. Jerry McLaurin died on September 11th. Damn, <laughs> Alexa. How old is Terry McLaurin? Terry McLaurin is twenty-eight years old and was born on September fifteenth, nineteen ninety-five. Twenty-eight. There you go. Two years. The one's on his first deal. One's already paid. Terry might be a better bargain. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, man. I don't him. know, man. I think Terry's overpaid. By the way. But I still think he's a he's a uh, wish app number. He's a team yeah. number one receiver. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he did a lot with Brock Purdy under center. That's all I'm saying. Brock Purdy's supposed to be good. Brock Purdy was a top five quarterback last year, bro. He was. He has a 71.4 percent catch rate. We'll, we'll see. I I don't know, man. I think I think Terry. I don't know. Like that. It's a push, bro. And you know, I, I can understand why somebody would say Terry is is not as good as Brandon Ayuk, man. But they're not they're like this, man. Terry had a sixty two percent catch rate, so one he, Brandon Ayuk catches ten percent more passes. Uh, G. Reese says he's not looking at the all twenty two film. Every quarterback has flaws, but he's all in on Penix. Deluxe says he would absolutely not do this. Todd says Jaden and Brandon Ayuk reunited. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michael says, can we talk about Jahan and Terry's future next season? If need live up to their abilities, can be traded and Jahan won't get his option. That's a, that's a huge deal, right? Jahan has a lot to prove. It's, it's almost contract time for him. And what do you get in contract? You usually get good production out of receivers. So the, 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 the Houston Texans are going to get a contract year out of Stefan Diggs this year. What they did today, they avoided the rest of his years. They're going to front load some money and they're paying him everything. So he's a free agent next year. So they are getting contract year Stefan Diggs this year in 2024. For Jahan Dotson, I, I, I'm going to look up his contract here real quick. Yeah, I would have I would have done that for uh, Diggs. I ain't doing that for no uh, Jahan Dotson, bro. I mean, no, no uh, Brandon. I- so Jahan is on these his uh third year of a four-year deal so next year is his fourth and final year officially under contract so next year is his contract deal well so, they got that still with digs up because they take on that contract too a lot yeah. of it, right yep we hey, got the money that we have the money to do that i would I, I mean you gotta tell me we had that uh that second second round pick for fuck and get a fifth and a sixth for uh hell they ain't gotta give up that second round pick till next year that ain't even this year's pick yeah yeah, I would have done it, man. I would have easily done it. I would have taken. I would have taken Diggs. That's crazy. This one says Ayuk would be another massive step towards building around a quarterback. Uh, Ayuk know. and McLord pairing would likely rank among the league's top ten duos at the position. Cap they're space already, is probably already in the top ten in deals last year without him. I don't. I, you know, I, again, I don't. I don't know if if Ayuk would be better than a than a second round pick at receiver for us, man. Like I yeah. don't know. I don't know what. What you would expect that guy to do with 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 Terry and a new rookie running back and Ertz and and a, and a receiving running back out there? I don't know what you would expect I to do. I don't think you get twenty something million dollars of production out of that guy, dog. Just like you don't get twenty three million dollars of production out of Terry. Now you'd have two. You'd have possibly fifty million dollars in receiver out there, man. I I don't I don't think that's a. 
I don't think they do fifty dollars, fifty million dollars a receiver shit. No. Yeah, the Lux kind of makes a point. You were saying, say you pick wide receiver at 36, 67 right. in a deep draft. Keep Jahan. That's three talented wide that's receivers what I would do. on rookie contracts versus Ayuk. So that's what I, that's what I would do. I wouldn't pick at thirty six <laughs> and sixty seven, but I would definitely if 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 one of those five or six receivers is at thirty six, I would take a look at it. Yeah, or forty, I would take a look at it. You know. Yep. You might get a Legat or maybe a real fast dude. Uh they might be there, man. Xavier maybe, Worthy. Yeah, they might be Texas. they might be there. Like you might be you might be able to either trade back up and get one of them or they might be there at the end of the yeah. first and get a second. Phil wouldn't do it, you wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it either. Uh, what's the Florida State guy? The uh tall six seven dude that runs like a four four? Keon Coleman. No, nah, the other one. Is he didn't uh, play a like, lot, he was hurt. He was hurt, but he was probably the best guy he didn't play. If Marcus six, is here, I know Marcus knows. Six seven, he's six seven. Hold on, I'll tell you. It's like something Wilson, I think, man. Yeah. I'll look it up. Uh, Tim says, if it was just a second-round pick and we have to pay him, I would be for it. He's very young. We don't have anyone that's worth paying big bucks to. AG says, just get our quarterback already and build around him. Yes, that's why we have draft fatigue. That's why we are. <laughs> we are in therapy tonight <laughs> trying to get through all this. And so the draft is – a little bit of ways away. We still have three more weeks till the draft. And we will be going live at said draft here uh, on this channel. Don't worry. It will be a blast because we will also have Mr. Todd Samuel joining us live on the podcast. Proof of life that he is a person. And we will, we will watch his reaction on the second pick. It's going to be awesome. We cannot wait. We cannot wait. I mean, we're either going to see orgasmic joy or suicidal depression. One of the two. Minecraft game over. By the way, <laughs> AG says a big wide receiver is a must. This draft is super deep with wide receivers. It's going to be good. Going to be good. That was just to compare the trade. I wouldn't pick wide receiver at both picks either. Yeah, I just use one of your one of your seconds. I would use a third, one of the seconds and one of the thirds. Maybe one of those. Yeah, get a tight end too, man. Get me a tight end, please. Get me a tight end, please. Get me a tight end. But all right, I think we've we've run we've run our course to what we had in the agenda here, fellas. We talked a little bit about some of the new signings with Sean Taylor. Happy birthday! We went over the numbers. Talked about who was available here. Breaking the commanders debut wearing the number zero. So. Just kind of cool. And then Adam Knight says he would trade the number two pick. We would. You're getting watery on us. I don't know what you said. Getting watery. I am. Johnny yeah, Johnny Wilson. Now. Johnny yeah. Wilson is the guy I'm talking. This Florida State of Southern Alabama. Florida State. Johnny Wilson. Oh. Six seven two thirty seven. Runs four. Uh, Johnny four. Wilson. Okay. Yeah. Expect to go like fourth or fifth round, but I, I hear he's creeping up. He's yeah. Six foot seven, like two hundred thirty seven pounds of lightning, dog. Should look yeah. up his highlights. It's ridiculous. Okay. Like, someone like it had a play. You know, their quarterback got hurt and their first receiver all got hurt. You know, for say they all got hurt. Yeah. But those guys are supposed to be pretty high picks. Tim says we don't need another Devin Thomas and Malcolm Kelly situation. Right, we got Devin Thomas and Malcolm Kelly coming to be the third receiver, it'd have been okay. But we expect those guys to come in and be number one. Pow pow. Yeah. Pa -pow. Jokes on you. Oh, by the way, where we're talking about nothing in this last couple of minutes, uh, Shogun was lit. Invincible was super lit. The best episode of Invincible season finale was doper than dope. If you haven't watched it, watch that shit. I started my binge of Shogun. I just got through episode one. So oh, I mean, now from this God. point, it's the, all I'm watching until I'm done with it. It's not, it's like an action series, but it's not. It's, it's really like, weird. It's, it's not like you, you expect the wars to be like Battle of the Bastards, but people get fucked up, but it's not yeah. Battle of the Bastards fucked up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's pretty looking forward to it. I finished up uh, Brother Son and I finished up uh, Masters of the Air, which was by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks, which is another fantastic documentary series of World War II. Uh, it's going to win lots of awards this year. I can see it now. You think so? Oh, yeah. Plenty, dude. It's so good. It's so good. I'll, I'll watch the, uh, the uh, damn it. Ah, hold on. I'm going to tell you. I forgot the name of it. Man. Deluxe says Kaz Allen's just keeping that 10 warm. <laughs> society, the American Society of Magical Negroes. Bro. What? Bro. What bro. is that? Bro. The, uh, bro. Bro, you got to watch that shit. The American, it's about a group of niggas that are hidden in society that are, that are, have magic. And their whole magic is to make white people feel comfortable around them 
So it causes it, it makes them less scary. But it's like a bunch of magical niggas, magician niggas going around pulling I, hijinks. On what people. network is this on? It's not on network. It's like a, it's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I don't know if it's on Netflix or anything yet, man. But it's pretty uh, good. I watched dude. it last night. It's got a, it's got your boy in it. Uh, from living in living color. Uh, damn it, the, David Allen Greer. Oh, David David Greer. Greer. Yeah, okay. it's, it's pretty funny. And the co buyer in it. Uh, it's got a uh, Justin Smith, the guy that played the. Uh, you watched the uh, Pokemon movie where he's a detective. I guess. No, I didn't his dad was a detective, and he went to find out his dad died. But uh, that. It's uh he played that the live action Pokemon movie. He played that movie, which pretty yeah, good. Yam says that shit's already bombing. Whatever you hey, it is probably gonna bomb, but it's funny <laughs> as hell. Watch the American Society of Magical Negroes. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of Negroes or magic, ironically, but yeah. <laughs> it's got right. a half a Negro and a uh and some a little magic. But it's pretty good. Marcus says the new King Kong and Godzilla movie's really good. I heard it's pretty I, I good. I'm gonna go see it this weekend. I haven't seen it yet. I didn't want to watch it too. Yeah, I did go watch uh, Dune 2 also. Good. Yeah, I love Dune 2. I started watching The Last Dance. It, it, I, I watched it like in passing, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it like methodically and pay attention. The Jordan documentary. Oh, yeah. It's, pretty it's good. so good. I, I, I watched the first episode again. Like, oh, man. What's the name I, of- why did I give this such little attention when it came out? It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be so good. X Men '97 was dope. Again, the best episode it's had so far. I think you you talked about that for the last four podcasts, if I'm not mistaken. It comes on, comes on weekly, man. <laughs> it comes on weekly. That '97, you're in love yeah, with that, it that comes, series. It comes on weekly, man. Yeah, that's pretty good. The M says no Shogun just makes me Mr. Panic. Oh right my god, hey dog, look, man, this dude just a, not to spoil it because it's not really a spoiler. It's about this white guy who gets shit wrecked in Japan and they end up, you know, he ends up befriending them. I would never leave from him, man. This dude, they got this dude living with two hot Asian chicks, bro. Like he's fucking on all of them at will. You know what I'm saying? They got this dude, like some that everybody gives him like swords and shit. He's the only one that were guns. Like the water is clear, crystal clear, you can drink out of it, bathed in the hot springs from the volcanoes and shit. Like he's living the life, but he keeps kept trying to escape. I'm like, dude, why do you want to leave this motherfucker? You're like the king's best friend. You smash uh, every hot Asian chick in Asia. Is he I would por- never leave. Portuguese? He's Portuguese, I think, in the movie, in the show. I think he's from Europe, but he's he oh. got there by way of uh, the Portuguese ships. Yeah, okay. You know. I guess Spaniard, the Spain and Portugal used to uh, trade front the money, <laughs> front the money for these expeditions. That's how Columbus came over. Spain fronted the money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's why the ships were named the Nina Penta and the Whatchamacallit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, they weren't like a. Uh, the British names, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Deluxe says Ghostbusters was good. I haven't he, watched that. I don't, dis- I don't know. He, I'm, he a, I'm a Paul Rudd fan, but he's disappointed with X Men '97. Something with audio or animation doesn't feel right. Not it's sure. The same though. animation for the most part. Yam says, "Did we see Zeke might go back to Dallas? I did not. I, 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 I saw I, some I rumblings. I, I saw some part. rumblings because they've done nothing. The, Phil, bro- Phil broke the, uh, the the news on uh, free agency day that." <laughs> That Dallas has done nothing. I think they signed a long snapper. I think they I signed a long snapper. Back. Okay, I they got a linebacker. I'll call that, by the way. And they want Dak to do more with less. Jerry Jones said that. I want my quarterback to do more with less. Like, what What general manager slash – What? who says that? I want my quarterback to do more with less. Come on now. Thank God for Jerry, man. I love it. They're going to be in poverty this year. It's going to be great. No, they ain't. They'll find a way to be better than us. Yam says Japan has a very different idea of sex and skinship. Yes, they do. Uh, yep, AG Dallas is done. That's right. It, it, it'd be nice. Who knows, man? Maybe we can pull off a Houston Texans and turn it around. And Houston turn it around in what? One year. They found a quarterback in CJ Stroud. Just found a defensive coach in um, uh, brain fart. They have a defensive minded coach. Just because you make the playoffs one year don't mean you turn it around. They they made the playoffs because a dude from the coast dropped a three yard pass with nobody on them, dog. No, and, uh, but Dev, that's been a poverty playoffs. franchise for years, just like us. Yeah, they made the playoffs more recently than we have. You tripping, dog? They've been more relevant than we have over the last like ten, five, or six years, dog. That before, one, year before, Watson, one yeah, year with the Sean Watson. One year with the Sean Watson. When's the last time we've been relevant? Two thousand twelve. I mean, we had we had two. We've had three division championships, and we're still irrelevant. Like, we had dude. 12. We had, what, 17 with Kirk? That's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's been just 20. as bad with them as us. And I was like, oh, they turned around because they barely made the playoffs because somebody on the coast dropped, the touch, dropped a wide open three-yard pass. 
Drop have you seen the talent the they have on their team? Yeah, they have, I mean, they, that, they, they now they have. have it, but they haven't done shit with it. Do you remember the talent we had? We had Deion Sanders and all them motherfuckers. No, Chambay, Dev, 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 this Bruce is different. Smith. They have the best different? wide receiver trio in the NFL, all on rookie contracts except for Stephon Diggs and a rookie right. quarterback. All I'm saying is, I remember Mark Carrier and Archuleta and all them came over one year. Oh, that was and then we get Snyder there, we got and Schottenheimer, 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 Ryan. We thought, we thought we were going to be a lot of stuff you're naming all happened in different years. Didn't all happen at once. Yeah. But it all was the same time frame of teams, though. And we stunk. The 2000. It, remember, the, remember the Lakers got all them motherfuckers on one team, uh, the, uh, the fucking mailman and Gary Payton and all them motherfuckers, and lost to the Pistons who had no all stars. Nah, Houston turned it around, man. I, I'm fully on board that Houston has finally figured it out. All they needed was was CJ Stroud, and the rest has fallen in line, man. It, I'm gonna it, tell you like Harlem nice then. then come, come that day, you, you you finna be a rich nigga. You finna be like you not gonna put some money on it. Put some money on it, man. Put some what? money on it that Texas not making the playoffs. Put some money on it. Not making the playoffs. Yeah, not making the playoffs. Oh, they'll make the playoffs. We gotta make a bet right here. If if, if Houston does makes the playoff, does not make the playoffs, you gotta do. A karaoke version of <laughs> My Niggas by DMX <laughs> on, on the podcast. <laughs> what? You know, what? You can, change, you, can change, you can change the words to My Ninjas if you want to. <laughs> my Ninjas. <laughs> That's gonna, that's gonna be too. <laughs> oh, how's it gonna be hard? You gonna ask him to say niggas? Is that what's gonna happen? <laughs> He's like, it's gonna be, I'm gonna have to Cause you gotta think to change the words, man. Oh. Yeah, you gotta think about not saying niggas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, of my all niggas. the songs, man, of all the songs, you picked that one. I, I'll say niggas. You just say mine. I'll say niggas. <laughs> we'll do this. What? What? <laughs> my niggas. Oh man, there's a there's a tweet that was out there earlier. I want to find that shows you what the Houston uh, starting offense is supposed to look like, and it is just it's nasty. I don't right. I don't know where it is, but remember, remember when they, remember Philadelphia and uh, Vince Young said Vince Young, he said they had an all star team. What happened? He said they had the dream team in Philly. What happened? I'm just trying to say, know. man. I'm just trying to say these things tend to not work out. These dream team scenarios in the NFL, they tend not to work out. You not for Super Bowls. You might be good. Hey, the only time it's worked out was the Ray with the Rams, like the two years ago. It's only time yeah. it worked out. It's the only time it's worked out. I'm just saying, we've, we've been here before, man. We've also seen quarterbacks come in the league and burn shit up, and then the next year turn to Carson Wentz or fucking uh, RG3. Shit happens all the time, dog. You're one is diving to the end zone, smacked by Kerrigan away from not being a quarterback no more. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's true. Watching somebody else win a championship with your team, dog. Like you're like one hit away from that shit, bro. Like I don't, I don't believe shit until I see it, dog. I don't believe nobody is a franchise quarterback after one year of football, bro. I've seen way too much football to think that one year makes a motherfucker a, a great. Yeah. It, it doesn't, so I gotta this, see it again. This, this is this. I found the tweet. It actually, came from Robert Griffin. So the offense: uh, CJ Stroud, not, not Bert Griffin, Joe Mixon, Damian Pierce, Stephon Diggs, Nico, Nico Collins, and Tank Dell. I will Steve argue that's the, be, <laughs> that's the best receiver trio in the NFL. Dalton Schultz at tight end. Defense: Danielle Hunter, Will Anderson Jr. Like one of the best the ends in the NFL. Yeah. Danico Autry, who I don't know about. Linebacker: Aziz Al Shahir. Uh, that DB's Derek Stingley Jr., Jalen Petrie, Jimmy Ward, and Jeff Okuda. They're stacked, dude. They're stacked. Okuda's been trash, bro. He has been. He, yeah, he's a Ohio State burnout. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. But um, Jaden Dams would have RG3 effect first year with a good offense, according to AG. Uh, Deluxe says Dallas only has 62 players on the contract. We got them beat, boys. We got them beat. All right. They got, they got about 12 better than ours, though. <laughs> Dallas? Yeah. Like, like, who's on our team better than Parsons? Nobody. Who's on the team's better than Marcus Lawrence? De- Dexter Lawrence, whatever he is. Name a guy on our team who's better than Nobody. Twitter Lyman. Right. Name a guy on our team better than Dak. Like, come on, man. Nobody. Name a guy on our team better than uh, Mark Cooper. Not Mark Cooper. Mar- Mark Cooper. Uh, uh, yeah, CD Lamb. Right. Uh, you know, we talk shit about these motherfuckers, yeah. but they got like, they might have 12 niggas, but 12 niggas better than all of ours. That's true. So, I can't so argue with you, that. What are you going to say? They are just the Cowboys. All right. We've gone way long. Um, we're going to get out of here. Not sure if we back Monday or not. We'll keep you guys posted. Um, the draft is in three weeks, so please stay tuned. It's two 
three Thursdays from now, I think. On the my, my girlfriend's going to Ohio watch the eclipse, and I'll be here all by myself. Yeah, this and on Wednesday or Thursday, right? Yeah, she's going down there to watch it. You get the full eclipse there; it's going to turn the whole place night. Yeah, it's we coming up from the, last time. We got the one here last time. It's coming. It starts in Texas and comes at a northeasterly angle up through you know Kentucky, Tennessee, that whole belt going up towards Ohio, that whole angle. So we'll, we'll get in Maryland here, and Phil should get a good view. Of, he'll get a better view of it than I will. Um, I got the last one. I when was at, uh, I was Saturday, in the right? The eclipse is midweek next week. I don't know what uh, day. Uh, it was like Saturday. Is it? Yeah, it's like. Oh, never mind. It is this weekend. The 5th is Friday. The 6th is Saturday. I thought it was the 7th or 8th for some reason. I don't know. Haven't paid too much attention to it yet. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Any any uh, final thoughts? Any any shout outs? Shout out to whoever we drafted quarterback. <laughs> May you go. lead us to many victories. And there there are greener was, pastures ahead. If it's not Jaden Daniels. Dev's on that train. And I still that I still want them to do well. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I still want to do well. Phil's the voice of reason. You know why? Because it ain't Taylor Heineke. Yeah. Oh, or anybody oh, like that. Oh, oh. He's got his own. Got his own. Terry Rod, Terry J. Rod Miller. What's up, guys? Hey man, we're just gonna sign off. You can go back and watch replay, man. We missed you. We've been going for almost two hours, bro. But thank you for popping in and saying hi. You know how great of a podcast we are? We have two Eagles fans that watch us now. Yeah, that's Phil's boy. Good night, Tia. Thank you for joining us. Uh, funny show next time. AG, we appreciate you. All right. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel or catch this audio at any podcast platform you choose to listen to your podcast on. Uh, it'll be posted here very shortly. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday or Monday, but definitely next Thursday for a live stream. As always, I love you guys. Again, if, if, if the Texans don't make the playoffs, Steve's got to sing uh, the <laughs> acapella version of DMX, my niggas. I did not sign up for that, but it's probably going that route. All right. As always, peace and hail. We out. Yeah.